we reported earlier that at some point in the Upper East region, some farmers have had to plead with people in baiting them with guinea fowls to come and buy this rice because of the glut. Now, I've been joined in studio by Charles Nyaba. He's a rice farmer himself and also the head of programs and advocacy at the with the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana. And I thank you, Mr. Nyaba, for your time this evening. Now, you, you heard the CEO of the Ghana Buffer Stop Company speaking. He says that what we reported earlier is not true. In fact, it is your farm that we just showed on the yeah. television yeah. there in the Upper East region. Yeah. What's the real situation? I think uh, the real situation is uh, it's not good. And it's unfortunate uh, you have a, a whole executive secretary or executive director of a national food buffer stock company come out to deceive all of us. What's the deception in there? The deception is that if you like, ask any farmer. Even the media houses he says he traveled, ask them. Because I was communicating while they were in the field. Buy three, get, buy two, get three bags. So it's you mean that you, you buy two and you get one free? Yes. The, the point is that they have some sacks that they use to load. And those sacks are so huge mm -hmm. that the way they load it, the buyers are not satisfied. So they are saying that, look, we will not be able to take our time to do the loading. So the way you fail it, we are going to take two to make our, we are going to take three bags and that will do for the two bags. And that is the trend from all the areas in Napa. So, That's so how, you're saying that? that because of this glut, the, the buyers are actually taking advantage of the farmers because you have had to sell off a lot more and, and get little. Yes. Yeah, that's the case. I see. But what has accounted for this glut uh, um, this year? The ministry is saying that it's as a result of the improved seedlings they gave you in 2017. True? Yeah, I think uh, it's one of the factors. The rains is also another factor. And then last year, there was uh, this uh, major buyer mm -hmm. called Avinas. Avinas actually came to the place. They do weigh in. So the moment you harvest, they come to with their weighing machine, they will buy everything. So those who actually produce made profit. So we all went in there. Those who are producing 10 acres now increase to 20 acres. Others were also increase to 30 acres. I see. Now the ministry own initiative, special initiative on rice. They were inviting in investors and other farmers to increase their rice production. Mm -hmm. So that actually encouraged more people to go to expand their farmlands. And that's the, 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 the root of cause of the, the glut. I see, and, 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 and you, you, there wasn't enough buyers as well in, pl in place to meet the demand or the high production of, of the rice that you, we, you, you're experiencing You now? know, what happened is that buyers normally, if you don't have any regulatory body that will grade the price and how they weigh the produce, they mm -hmm. take advantage of oversupply to do any other things because they know that you don't have options. So let me establish this. Is it the case that you're actually having to beg them to buy it is the case. And, actually, and, and, and baiting them with guinea fowls? It is the case. But me, me, a farmer, I refuse to do that. So my rice, as we speak, is still on the farm. And I'm trying to find means to convey it out of the farm. And even what is not harvested, the combined harvester that we pleaded to go there to harvest, they've all moved away from the farm. So as we speak, I don't know what is going to happen in the next week or two. And when so, some most of the farmers are selling on credit? Of course, because your, your rice is there. You've not been able to pay for your combined harvesters. You don't have money to convey it to the nearest place that you store. What do you do? So if you get anybody to come and take it on credit, whether they will pay or not, you will prefer to do that than to leave the rice because the hamatan is setting in. Very soon, they, they will start burning the bush. So if you leave the rice on the farm, you are likely to lose all. So it's good for you to give it out and have hope that somebody owns you and one day you'll be paid, whether they will pay or not. That is a different well, story. I see, but uh, the great minister is saying that government is engaging some of these rice importers to actually cut down and buy from you, you know, the rice farmers in the Upper East and Northern regions. I think, uh, let me thank the agri minister for his quick intervention. That has been our proposal. Because in the past, when we talked, they said we don't have capacity to produce to meet demands demand. of consumers. And I always said that is not true. And they also said when they do that, we will spoil businesses of uh, retailers and those who import it. I said that is not true. Because what we need to do is that we need to put measures in place to mm -hmm. ensure that what we produce meet the standards of what is imported. The same people who import, 
then come to us and uptake it and distribute to consumers. It's as simple as that. It's done in other places, other mm -hmm. parts of the world. If you go to all rice right. exporting countries like Thailand, Indonesia, mm -hmm. China, India, what have you, that is what is done. And as we speak, your rice farms are inundated with whole lot and they're not buying and it's going bad because it's exposed to the weather. Yeah. Sad. But I want to thank you so much for painting the real picture to us this evening. Thank you for your time. Yeah, I, and I, maybe quickly you want to respond to that bit on banning yeah, rice in the next I think years. I, yeah, the government, uh, the minister listed a number of issues which mm -hmm. we are grateful for. That in the next three years they will ban importation of rice. That is fantastic mm -hmm. for us to be able to do that. There are three major key things that we need to look at. We need to improve on the harvesters, mm -hmm. bring more combined harvesters. Okay. We need to improve on the storage facilities. We need to create an right. en enabling environment for right. investors to come with millers that will mill it to meet the international standard and we'll be there. Yeah, but thank you for your time this evening. I'm grateful. And he's, he's the head of programs and advocacy at uh, the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana and also a rice farmer himself. He's actually the rice farm we saw earlier. Listen, we, we, we import over $1.1 billion worth of rice. As of 2017, according to the Deputy Trade Minister, it's in our own good. That, that we do this, 